Here in example 5b, we are once again asked to find the horizontal and vertical, vertical tangent lines of this particular polar equation, r equal to quantity 1 minus cosine theta. And a couple of things, Larson is not real specific about the directive of these particular directions in his text. And when he asks to find the horizontal and vertical tangent lines, we're not really looking for the equation per se. Let's just find the ordered pairs, the points at which these tangents occur and we will consider the job done. Um, this particular polar curve uh, is a member of the Limassol family. I believe it turns out to be a cardioid uh, because of the A and the B value being the same. But I want you all to realize that that's not important. Uh, we're going to be able to find out this particular solution without ever looking at a sketch. And of course, you could easily take a graphing calculator and sketch the curve to verify the results. But I'm more focused on the analysis of what we're about to do here. And the thing that uh, we, we first of all need to remember um, as our overall motivation here is that when we decide that we want to uh, take the, the derivative here, we're, we're going to be much better off if we work in parametric equations first. And we have a couple of uh, standard forms for those two parametric equations. Uh, r equal, I'm sorry, x equals r cosine of theta, which specifically in this case would allow us to say that x is equal to 2 quantity 1 minus cosine of theta all times cosine of theta. All we're doing is replacing the function here with the value r. And we'll do a very similar process with our y parameter. Now you may recall, of course, when we're dealing with finding tangents, we are quite interested in the derivative. And the derivative that uh, we really are focusing in on here is the derivative of y with respect to x. However, in parametric form, we have to adopt that just ever so slightly as dy d theta over dx d theta. So essentially, we're going to be taking two separate derivatives here. And if you recall, um, the only way that we would have a horizontal tangent line is if the derivative of the top was set equal to zero. Now that would be as long as the derivative of the bottom wasn't simultaneously equal to zero. And we'll talk about that in, this, in a little bit, and I believe that is going to happen in this particular problem. Likewise, the locations of the vertical tangents will be where the denominator is set equal to zero for those values of theta, as long as that same value of theta didn't yield a zero for the numerator. So let's focus right now on, on taking these uh, derivatives here. Let's, uh, let's focus on the, the vertical. I, I've got a reason for doing that first. Um, normally, it would not make any difference at all. So I'll sort of entitle this section vertical tangents. So our derivative of here we're going to be dealing with x, correct, since it is in the denominator. Well, there's probably a, a, a couple of different ways that one could go about taking this derivative. And I'm going to go ahead and just proceed with a product rule. Um, it's not going to be that difficult to do. I'm going to leave that 2 out in front and just focus on the derivative of the 1 minus cosine, which is obviously sine, positive sine, multiplied by the cosine. And then I shall add to that the original first function multiplied by the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. And at this point here, we can just do a slight bit of simplification. Not much going on with this sine cosine term. However, this second particular item, we could go ahead and distribute a negative sine of theta And then what we discover is that we have a pair of sine times cosine terms. That would allow us to write it as 2 sine times cosine minus sine. Now at this stage, I'm going to go ahead and 
focus on the directive at hand, and that is to find out all the values of theta uh, where this particular expression would be equal to zero. And sometimes solving these trigonometric equations can be a little bit of a challenge. Um, this one here is not so bad because of the presence of the sine term in both terms within the brackets, thus allowing us to factor it out. And in this case, we would obviously be left with 2 cosine of theta minus 1. And that's good news because we're going to be able to set each of these individually equal to 0 and come up with a solution rather easily. And to leave out some of the details here, 2 sine of theta is equal to 0, obviously, when sine of theta is equal to 0. So essentially, if I solve this equation, I've done a pretty good job of, uh, of solving 2 sine of theta. And then likewise, the cosine of theta, once I add a 1 and divide by 2, would yield this result. So as far as when sine of theta is equal to 0, well, obviously, there's an infinite number of solutions. But we're not going to worry about those infinite number of solutions because you've got to keep in mind that this all sort of harkens back to the graph of this original function way up here, which uh, we knew to be a, a cardioid. And as with many trigonometric functions of that variety, uh, by the time that you take your, your theta parameter from 0 to 2 pi, you've essentially sketched the graph in its entirety. And uh, in fact, the 2 pi value would just be a duplicate of the 0 value for theta. So really analyzing this on the interval that I want to write over here from 0 closed to 2 pi open is going to be sufficient enough. So if that's the case, then of course we would come up with the values 0 and pi for when the sine of theta is equal to 0. Finding out when the cosine of theta is equal to 1 half is no, oh, maybe slightly more challenging because you might want to deal with your unit circle or what I'm going to do here is kind of thinking more about the uh, triangle that, that would have a cosine ratio of 1 over 2. One such triangle would look like that. Hopefully you'd realize at this stage that theta would indeed be 60 degrees. It's the angle here that would be opposite the radical 3. That would be the longer side. Um, in radians, this would be pi over 3. So that's definitely a value of theta. But there is going to be another one on the interval 0 to 2 pi. And that can be obtained pretty easily by thinking about the unit circle and the mnemonic all students take calculus. And we realize that not only is the pi over 3 reference angle in quadrant 1 a solution, but because of the C word here, the reference angle of pi over 3 that's located in quadrant 4 will also be acceptable as a solution. And that, of course, would be 5 pi over 3. So we find that we have four values of theta that could be possible positions where we would have a vertical tangent. We'll get into that possible here in just a moment. Um, let's not be in a big hurry to go ahead and write the ordered pairings for this because, like I said, it, 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 it's highly likely that any one of these candidates or more could also be a value for when the numerator is equal to zero. And if you have a simultaneous situation for a value of theta where the numerator and the denominator are both zero, uh, basically it, it provides inconclusive evidence at that particular point, and we would not want to classify it as either type of a, a tangency. So what I'm going to do here is switch colors on us give us a little bit more contrast so that we can focus in on the um, derivative now of the uh, y, which is going to help us find these things called horizontal tangents. And I think once again, I'm going to elect to use the uh, product rule approach for this derivative. So dy d theta would equal 2 factored out in front, and then the derivative of 1 minus cosine would be positive sine multiplied by the sine function plus 1 minus cosine times the derivative of sine, which is positive cosine. And 
And as before, I'll just sort of clean up the contents of the brackets a little bit. I can write the sine times sine as sine squared. And I can distribute a cosine into the 1 minus cosine here. And then I guess we could start focusing on our ultimate objective, and that is to set this equal to 0. And perhaps the reason why I left this one uh, a second is I think there's a little bit more of a trick involved in, in solving this equation set equal to 0. And it's just because of the makeup of, of, the, of the trigonometric words that we see in our equation. Um, simply factoring out something will not work because we don't have that common factor, of course. Um, if you look at this a little more closely, you'll notice that, okay, of the three trig words, two of them are cosine. So maybe there's a chance that this sine squared could be written in terms of cosine. And hopefully just that thought process alone leads you to change the sine squared into 1 minus cosine squared using the Pythagorean identity. Pen's not wanting to work real well here. Let's see if we can write a little slower here. Okay, looks like that's somewhat legible. Let's see if we decide to combine some like terms, <clears throat> we would come up with, um, oh, a 1 and a, and a positive cosine and a negative 2 cosine squared. And if you look at that a little bit more closely, you'll think, you know, that does look a little bit like a quadratic type of expression. Your squared term, your linear term, and your constant term. What I'm going to do is <clears throat> reverse the order uh, from the way that I just read it, and I'm also going to factor out a negative. That way, my cosine squared term can lead off and be nice and positive. Now, hopefully you, you all see that, right? The com combination of the, um, whoops, I will need a 2 here. The combination of the two cosine squareds yields a negative 2 cosine squared. But if I factor out that negative, I can have positive 2 cosine squared. And then this cosine of theta that was positive will be negative now. And of course, the 1 which was positive will be negative now. Now what this allows me to do is to, to do a little factoring maneuver here. And, and, and to be able to do so a little less effortless, effortlessly. The 2 cosine squared has no choice but to factor into cosine times 2 cosine in either position. And of course, your 1 has got to multi uh, factor into 1 and 1. Now it's just a matter of playing the signs correctly in order to get this negative cosine in the middle. I think we would want our positive, or our 2 cosine theta rather, to take on the negative value than to be offset by a positive 1 cosine. So this negative 2 that we have factored out here really is not going to amount to much. <clears throat> and if we solve the two resulting factors individually equal to 0, we arrive at these two equations. Okay, now for the cosine of theta equaling 1, that's uh, slightly different than what we've had before. And we think, okay, the cosine curve does equal 1 at various locations uh, along the 0 to 2 pi domain. One of those would be 0. Oh, it's kind of interesting enough. That's cropped up again. And then the other value would be uh, 2 pi, which uh, we really do not have to consider since it essentially is the same value as 0. And then over here, we've got, whoops, try to erase that comma. I guess I don't need it if I'm not going to include anything else, huh? And then over in this other equation, the cosine of theta is equal to negative half. Well, I want you to think of this somewhat similarly to what we did over here on the left side for the cosine being positive half. The one thing that's going to change is just the quadrants in which this is located. Obviously, we're dealing with quadrant 2 and 3 to, to, to yield a negative value of cosine. And our reference angle is still going to be a pi over 3. That's not going to change. So you just have to sort of partition this out a little bit to be uh, in a situation, or, or rethink of it to be in a situation where we have the reference angles, but in different quadrants. And it seems as if 2 pi over 3 
and 4 pi over 3 will do the trick for us. Now, because it's getting very, very close on time here for this particular podcast, I'm going to stop this right now, and, and in Part B, I will pick up with the conclusion of this problem when we actually decide upon what are the points of vertical and horizontal tangency.